welcome to the Rocket Smith. Uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, a kit from Wildman, the Punisher 3. This is going to be the first in my kit reviews. Um, I'm going to focus on rockets that are like mid power to level 1, uh, maybe up to level 2. This is definitely one that's going to go towards level 1, level 2 motors, as it is a fiberglass kit. Uh, we're going to break this up into a number of sections. The first we're going to look at is value, price. What do you get in the box? Um, well, here's the box. Uh, it's just a shipping box. It came in here. All the pieces were in here. There was a bag that contained the bulkheads for the AV bay, the centering rings for the motor mount, and the nose cone assembly. It is a dual deploy rocket. That is a head-end dual deploy. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. It is an all fiberglass rocket. The nose cone's fiberglass, the airframe is fiberglass, the AV bay is fiberglass, everything's fiberglass. Um, what you get with it is an AV bay with a switch band. Uh, you get your nose cone, you get an aluminum nose cone, nose cone tip that is, can be removable. Um, I'm probably going to make it removable, not permanent. You get, um, you know, like I said, the bulkheads for the AV bay. You get the airframe, you get the fins, and you get the motor mount tube, and that is it. There are no instructions. There's no pictures of the finished rocket here. You can find all of that stuff online. There is a video build series for the Punisher 4, which is very similar to the Punisher 3. Um, and I'm sure a ton of people have other videos on the actual build process of this rocket. It's not terribly complicated. It is a three fin nose cone rocket. Um, pretty standard if you've done anything sort of high power, even if you've built something like an Estes Big Daddy that has through the wall fins, there's nothing new here uh, other than dealing with sanding fiberglass and using epoxy instead of like wood glue. So I think MSRP, this is right around 200 bucks. Um, for 200 bucks for a three inch diameter fiberglass rocket, even though it doesn't come with a motor retainer, it doesn't come with any recovery gear, no shock cord, no parachute protector, no parachute, um, and no hardware for the AV bay. The only hardware is for the nose cone itself, or it's the tip of the nose cone itself. 200 bucks for all the fiberglass parts. Um, fit and finish on these is pretty solid. Yeah, I'd say it's a good deal. Um, it's a better deal during the sales. Um, there's really only one sale in the rocket free industry in the U.S. every year. Everybody does a Black Friday sale. I don't think there's really much in the way of other sales that happen. You can get it from Wildman Rocketry. Um, it is one of their kits, so that's the only place you're going to get it. Anyways, the next section is kind of fit and finish. Um, everything, as far as I have tested, fits together uh, fairly well. Part of this is like you you really want to check, you know, how does, like you have uh, an aluminum nose cone tip. I just took this off of the, uh, the hardware that comes with it that threads into it. Um, how does that fit on the fiberglass? There's no big lip here uh, in this connecting area. It looks like it's going to be, you know, really easy to assemble. It's, it's very easy to center. Um, I've had issues with older kits where that was not necessarily the case, where I had to do some sanding on the nose cone to level it out um, to get that to fit correctly. Not the case here. Very well put in. The coupler fits smoothly and easily into the nose cone, which is important because this does not get uh, attached to the nose cone uh, permanently. It's not glued in. Um, the parachute sits in the nose cone for head-end dual deploy and we deploy the nose cone off and the uh, the back of the tube. It's, it splits at this coupler, this single coupler. The band slides in just fine. The bulkheads fit very well. They are stepped bulkheads. I don't know if you can see that here. Uh, very, very nice. And the bulkheads have dots already um, marked on them, drilled on them. Uh, obviously CNC because that's done by an end mill, not a drill. There's no uh, depth to it. Um, make it easy to drill through them, but at the same time, if you don't want to use those holes, 
you don't have to. Very, very nice. I'm uh, very happy with that. And then the acid test for any kit I find with uh, through the wall fins is whether or not the fins fit in the slots without any sanding whatsoever. Um, you're still going to do some sanding because you need to rough up the surface for the epoxy to bond correctly. But uh, yeah, these fins go right on in. And that is the, uh, the single biggest gripe I have with kits is fin slots are never big enough for the fins they send with you. I think that has a lot to do with figuring out the size you need for the fin slot. Because it's on a curved surface, it makes the math a little funky. It's not just an eighth inch hole. You have to realize that when you curve things, the inside is going to be thinner than the outside if you're just doing an eighth inch hole on the outside. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that. The centering rings um, are tight, which is how I kind of like them. Give me a little bit of a fight. If I have to sand a little bit, it's not that big of an issue because you have to sand anyways. Um, I have gotten these on before. I don't know why it's not sliding on now. Maybe I just tested the other one or from the other side or something like that. Yeah. These are not bad. Um, you want them to be a little tight. You want this to be a tight fit. Um, to help with the bond and keep everything nice and strong. Yeah, so that'll be good. Um, inside the airframe, it's a little loose inside the airframe, but that's fine. I would say if there's one thing I do not like about this design, it is the fact that it uses only two centering rings. I'm a really, really big fan of three centering rings, and there is a reason for that, is so you can build up the forward two centering rings, epoxy them in place, get them in the right spot after you've measured and done all that stuff. You can leave the last ring off and that will allow you to get really, really good, easy access to the internals of the fin can to do internal fin fillets. Um, it is one of the things I, I really prefer there, but it's not it's not going to negatively affect the strength of the rocket really that much, even on a, even if I were to put an L motor in this rocket, if I can even fit an L motor in this rocket, these fins are going to stay on just fine. Um, one thing to remember, through the tube fins are way stronger than surface mounted fins, but you know, there are people out there who have epoxied fins onto motor cases and flown them past Mach 3. You can, if you do it right, if you spend your time, you do it right. You don't need the strength, it's just nice to have for the tip through fins for a fiberglass rocket. Um, that might be different on cardboard rockets if you're really going to kick their butt. But um, I also know the guy from Balsa Machining has did his level 2 with a <clears throat> minimum diameter J510 from Aerotech on cardboard with surface mounted fins, uh, plywood fins. So even that's like, do you really need it? Um, and that was all with wood glue too, I believe, no epoxy. I'm not entirely sure on the fillets of that, but everything else was definitely wood glue. I am a big fan of ease of use for through the wall fins. I prefer them when I see people trying to certify level one and I'm certifying them. It's just in general going to be a better, easier to make, it's easier to make it strong when you have the Bins through the, the tube. Yeah, that's kind of the review so far of the kit. Um, it is a good kit. It has a 54 millimeter diameter tube, so you can put all the way up to an L in here. Um, if it can fit lengthwise, it might be a little short for that. Um, also, you're not gonna find that rocket because <laughs> it's gonna go like 20,000 feet. But uh, yeah, 54 gives you a lot of options if you wanna all right, let's talk about the motor mount. Um, one thing I don't like is it only uses two centering rings. <clears throat> Three inch rocket, fiberglass, with a 54 millimeter tube is really, really fun. Um, I do like going high, although last year that didn't really <clears throat> give me great results. Um, but you can always adapt down. And you can adapt down like two sizes. You can totally fly a grunty 29 millimeter H in here. 
or uh, like a G125. So that, that's another thing to consider is you can always adapt down. I do like the 54 millimeter motor mount tube and a fiberglass rocket. It's probably a bit much for a three inch cardboard rocket. All in all, um, it's probably a nine out of 10 kit. If I were to give Knox to it is adding nose cone weight. If you need it for stability, I have not yet to model this. Um, that might be an issue simply because it's head on dual deploy. You're going to take up space for your parachute. Uh, we'll have to see how well balanced this comes out and where the center of pressure is and all that. I'm sure because a million of these have flown, it's fine. That's it for this rocket. Like I said, it's like a 9 out of 10. There are a few things, an extra centering ring. Maybe a bit more length. I think a taller rocket might be a little bit more fun with this. But at the price point, this is a really, really solid rocket. There's very little wrong with it. Um, I wish they had an option to just click to add a motor retainer, recovery harness, and parachute. That would be good for it. That would be fantastic. Same with a uh, drogue parachute as well. But I've got a ton of that stuff. It's not that big of a deal for me. See you in the next video.